Delphi murder suspect Richard Allen slipped through the net of law enforcement back in 2017 due to a clerical error it has been revealed. A civilian FBI employee mislabeled or misfiled information about Mr. Allen when he was interviewed by police not long after the murders of Libby German and Abby Williams in Delphi, Indiana. As a result, Mr. Allen's name fell off the radar and the case went unsolved for more than five years. Finally, an investigator trawling through old files uncovered the misplaced information and the 50-year-old local man was arrested and charged with the murders in October. What happened here was some sort of clerical error or misfiling by a civilian employee of the FBI, the Murder Sheet podcast told The Independent. It was not a malicious error, just an unfortunate mistake, where a clerical error let the Richard Allen tip sink to the bottom of the whole file, essentially. And only recently, when someone was going through the old tips, they found that tip and thought, we need to follow that up. So when people ask, why has it taken five years to loop back to Richard Allen, that's what we've learned. The Murder Sheet podcast added, it was not the result of someone calling in a tip or someone incarcerated speaking up now, but it was someone in law enforcement going through old tips and discovering information from 2017. The revelation that it was a clerical error that enabled the accused killer to walk free for more than five years comes after it emerged that Mr. Allen was questioned about the murders back in 2017. A redacted version of the probable cause affidavit was released on Tuesday, finally laying out what led law enforcement to the suspect. Okay, so I'm going to share my thoughts on what we've just listened to there. Now, for me personally, I don't buy into this filing idea, misfiling, clerical error, whichever you want to call it. I don't buy into that, and I'm going to tell you why. Firstly, we've had a multitude of press conferences since the murders of these two girls discussing what is going to take place if you have exhausted all avenues. Doug Carter has said on more than one occasion, once we've gone through all of the tips that we have, we're going to circle back to the beginning and we'll start all over again because we know that the missing piece of that puzzle is in there somewhere and we must have missed it. So we'll go back and we'll cover everything again. He said that on more than one occasion, even back to the earlier press conferences, he was still using that terminology. Now, the second point, and probably the more important one that I wish to make, is the fact that Richard Allen, by all accounts, gave this report to a conservation officer. This report was given shortly after the murders. Now, do you not think that at some point in time, during the last five, almost six years, that that conservation officer is going to come forward to at least one of his colleagues, maybe even a family member or a friend, and say, hang on a minute, what about that guy that came forward very early on? What did he look like? Well, he was white, he was mid-40s. Actually, come to think of it, he kind of resembled that guy on the bridge. I mean, did the conservation officer pass away or something? I don't know. I mean, I can't believe that. I can't buy into this idea that a report has been given to a conservation officer, yet over the next five to six years, that's never been mentioned again. The reason I say that is because this isn't a cold case. This hasn't been hidden from the media we've had very high-profile press conferences concerning these murders, 2017, 2019. Surely at some point in time, that conservation officer is going to go back, or at least remember what took place, remember taking that report, sharing that information with someone he worked with. It's probably also worth remembering that we're not just talking about one individual concerning this report. This conservation officer surely would have had to have passed this report on to someone else, maybe someone higher up in his department or someone else on his department. So it wouldn't have just been one individual who took down some notes and chucked it in a drawer. Surely other individuals were aware that this report was taken. And to me, hearing such a term as, oh, clerical error, it's such a generic excuse. It's almost like, oh, Karen didn't do the filing. Karen messed up the filing. Oh, the bloody work experience girl messed up the filing cabinet. Christ, what are we going to do? It's such a generic excuse that I can't really buy into this. I really can't. For us to believe this excuse, or this reason, I should say, then really we have to believe that many individuals simply forgot that this report existed. Not just Richard Allen, not just the conservation officer, but people who actually were aware that that report was actually taken. 
Now, at this point in time, we don't actually know what is contained in that report between Richard Allen and this conservation officer. But another interesting point to highlight is the fact that we had this abandoned car, didn't we, at the old CPS building. This appeared in the 2019 press conference. Anyone with any information or the driver of that vehicle, please come forward. Richard Allen claims he parked at an old Farm Bureau building, a building which never even existed. Surely that is there on the report somewhere. How did you get to the trail that day? Well, I drove my car, parked outside an old building. I think it was an old Farm Bureau building. Didn't the conservation officer realise that that building doesn't even exist? Didn't anybody who checked over that report realise that the Farm Bureau building doesn't exist? Why are they so keen to trace the driver of that vehicle when he's been there the whole entire time in your report? Did that not send alarm bells ringing in the conservation officer's mind when he hears, oh, okay, uh, a vehicle parked at the old CPS building. Hang on a minute. That guy told me he parked his vehicle there. What the hell is going on with this? Something, as I've said in countless other videos, something's gone terribly wrong here, somewhere along the line. I can't believe for one moment that with all of the information that's come out, all the information they're looking for, hasn't, for some reason, come back to that conservation officer. And he's thought to himself, hang on a minute, I did a report just shortly after these murders. A guy came forward and said he parked at this old building, an old farm bureau building, which doesn't exist. He resembles the man on the bridge. He's around about the same height. His voice is very similar. What the hell is going on here? I don't buy into this, as I say, this clerical error, this admin error. I mean, many people will say, well, this report may be very vague. It may simply say Richard Allen, he's 40 odd years old, medium build, he was on the bridge between these two times, and that's the end of it. But surely common sense should tell you that if you've got an individual who's come forward and actually put himself near the crime scene, or even walking on the bridge, he's putting himself basically there during the time that these girls were killed. Surely these reports are the ones that need to be the most thoroughly checked over. They need to be packed full of detail. Detail that can be cross-referenced and cross-examined and looked into. Not just, oh, okay, mid-40s male, met at the grocery store, he was there between X, Y, and Z. To me, that's not what took place. Surely this is a very detailed report, or at least it should have been. And really the only way that I can see this clerical error being factual is if really the conservation officer made a mistake somewhere. Maybe he did take a very sparse report down. Maybe it was simply chucked in the back of a drawer and simply forgotten about. Either way, whatever way that you look at this, there are serious failings here. Serious failings from top to bottom. I think just the fact that Richard Allen gave this report outside of a grocery store is a massive monumental oversight in the first place. People who were there that day, people who walked the trail, individuals who walked across that bridge, particularly during the timeline that the police are interested in, the time when these murders were committed, those individuals are imperative to the earliest stages of this investigation. What they saw, what they heard, even where they walked, is incredibly important to these investigators. Yet we're led to believe that Richard Allen just strolled outside of a public grocery store. The conservation officer just took down some notes in a pocketbook. This wasn't even voice recorded. Anyway, many thanks for joining me for this video. Please feel free to share your own thoughts and theories in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button to be notified of future content. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.